been said before, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up again that counts. England showed huge courage in their Paris fight back, only to be floored by a late, late sucker punch. But now Chris Robshaw and his men must raise themselves and quickly for the challenge of Scotland at Murrayfield. Welcome to O2 Inside Line. First up this week, it's player analysis. Let's start with some of the positives in terms of you going quickly. Is that something the coaches have said, we want to see this from you? Yeah, they give me the, the license to, to play what we see. Just before half time, most teams probably would have taken the penalty in front of the post, but Danny felt that raising the tempo was the right thing to do, and obviously it paid off. So the option there has obviously got runners off Owen there. So Owen's decided to take the ball to the line and pick off one of the options. Billy Twelve Tree has obviously gone on, on a harder line there and sat down the defender, and that late ball to Billy has just opened up a hole. Obviously, Billy does the rest there. Billy obviously gets a lot of headlines for his power game, but do you feel his skills are perhaps understated? He's a brilliant ball carrier, a bit of a talisman for us. Um, you see left hand, right hand fend, three men on him still manages to get the offload. And it's great work from Luther, special moment for him. I think he'll remember that for a long time. Yeah, how clear is it the, the tempo that Scotland want to play with? Trying to play a lot more, I think, under Scott Johnson. Uh, they're throwing the ball around more, they're playing with a good tempo. You know, they've got some big, strong ball carriers who, you know, like to play off 10. I think you can see here they want to get the ball in play as quick as they can. They've got a really quick back three with Hogg obviously leading the charge there. There's no way we want to give a player like Hogg this much space to, to run in a dead straight line about 60 metres, you know. that. You know, we can't let that happen. We've got to be a better line, better connected. We want to get our faster guys or our bigger lads on him. It's going to be very important for us to, to not allow him all that room to run back at us. So, sort of working hard once, once the kick's gone in to, to chase hard and, and put the pressure on. If you can produce the kind of form that you showed in Paris, how high are the confidence levels? I think if we play like we can and even improve on the performance we had in, in France, then I hope we'll have a good day on Saturday. In this week's teammates, we ask, who'd play you in a movie? People say sometimes I look a bit like Ben Fogel, so probably him. <laughs> probably Tom Cruise, because he's short. Because he's short. Next. <laughs> I, I quite like Denzel Washington. Owen Wilson, because he's got a rubbish nose as well. Lloyd Christmas, off Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Fair enough. Leonardo DiCaprio, good looking, pretty cool, tiny. Jack Black, kind of <laughs> fat, funny guy. Uh, I, know his, I know his answer already. <laughs> I can know his answer straight away. Denzel what? Washington. Yeah, right? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm probably on the same level like with The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson. So we'll probably slot in when he retires. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got the same rig and stuff, so. Stephen Merchant, but I'm nowhere near as funny as him, so <laughs> not him. Uh, Matt Damon, classic, classic guy, you know. Are there any 12 foot actors, Dave? With Mark Bayfield. It's got to be Gerard Butler for me. Similarities are quite, quite poignant. <laughs> really? The bloke in Home Alone. McCauley Culkin. Mixed between Denzel and uh, Tyrese Gibson, I think his <laughs> name is, from Fast Furious. It'd be a guy sat on his sofa. Yeah. There wouldn't be much going on in that no, film, that's no. true. No. Chilling out. This week, player cam lifts the tin. Yeah, here are the boys in the gym. Uh, Brad Barrett on the bench. There's about 120 kilos on there. He backs himself on the bench. Little wink to the camera, he's, uh, he's happy. Here's the big lift then here. Yes. Another bench session, there's more a dumbbell exercise here, so more sort of stability in the shoulder, but, but still big weight again. But here's the big man lifting. <laughs> That's what people want to see. But quite a typical session for us here, a bit of upper body, there's obviously Danny, Danny doing some bench. Um, and then we'll probably going into more of a physio, physio leg thing in between, so we a heavy lift and then more of a physio drill. Uh, that's just a single arm dumbbell row, just explosive, a bit of explosive power. Here's another, another strange looking exercise. Um, I think it's one of those exercises you do in the, in the middle, but off in between doing a heavy lift, you go into that. Uh, you see that that's not his chest, that's a, that's a little bit of a padding in, in there, and that, that just helps for explosive power. You can lift a slightly heavier weight, but get more explosive by dropping it onto your chest quickly to, to fire up the movement. My name is Nigel Cox, and I'm head of stadium events at the RFU. We bring on about 800 uh, direct RFU employees on a match day. Uh, we have a great group of people who look after the, the seating bowl, who are all volunteers. And on top of that, there's all the uh, Twickenham experience, who do all the caterers, all the bar staff, and of course the cleaners. It goes up to about 4,500, 5,000 people on a match day, so it's a huge number of staff. It's not all about rugby these days, is it? Tell us a little bit about moving into concerts and, and how many of those you do a year? We do, we have uh, quite a few concerts now. Uh, we have different license arrangements. We can have three or five concerts a year, depending. 
uh, depending on the acts that are touring really that want to come to, uh, to Twickenham but it's it's a great atmosphere when a concert moves in it's really really good we have lots of cameras lots of CCTV cameras that we can look around the stadium we have over 80 cameras so we can see every part of the stadium when the train turns up we can see the people getting off the train and walking up to the to the stadium and it's good at, at really preparing for the crowd arriving what is the most hectic part of the day an hour and a half to an hour before kickoff when the majority of the fans turn up and then it is quite quite busy you've also got one of the best seats in the house up here do you ever get a chance to actually watch the game down there or are you can you know always looking at screens in front of you you get a good view but it's soundproof this area so you don't really get the atmosphere uh, although some of the guys that are watching you'll soon know if they score a try because they're up on their feet but it's one eye on the match and the other eye on the on the cameras really so the stage is set for two fierce rivals england may have won the last four encounters but always beware the wounded scots the Calcutta Cup's the prize in a game neither side dare lose. The Thistle, the Rose. Five o'clock Saturday. Don't miss it.